raped in the hospitals and, and uh, conceived and had a baby. So to, to create that experience of creating something that it did not exist before, that's what the human body is capable of. You know, it's like the mystery of it is aliens. Nobody really knows what happens there. We have books and volumes written about the stages of this gestation and human embryos, anatomical, medical texts, but what actually makes it happen, it's as mystery to us as it was a thousand years ago and two thousand years ago, because some things really cannot be learned through our talking about it. So when the woman goes into this process of creating the, the something new, and not just something, but a whole new human being, there is so much going on, so much going on in her body. And that is why I am saying that creating a, 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 a child is a mystery. It's a rite of passage. It's a highly spiritual experience. And when the medical mafia treats it as a mechanical um, machinery, when the baby's body is being extracted out of the mother's body, so you, so you saw 25-minute version, so you didn't see the C-section part, right? Oh, we started the wrong version. Right, right, but a lot of women are just being pushed into C-section without uh, uh, necessity. It's being fabricated as a result of some injection. You know, the birth is going just fine, and the doctor comes in and injects some pitocin, and there we go. She needs a C-section because all her hormonal dialogue is uh, thrown off whack. And they are taught to do that. They, there is not a line in the medical textbooks about natural birth. There is no concept. In fact, it's they're being taught that women are not capable of giving birth anymore. And it's true for maybe two to five percent, depends on the society, um, culture, country. We have lots of new diseases. We have sports injuries, car injuries, you know, some conditions that in 2 to 5 percent we do need some professional help. But the rest of us are quite capable of procreating. The thing is, if um, a woman is relaxed, her cervix opens up because her bloodstream is flooded with oxytocin. The thing is, if she is stressed, then the flood of oxytocin is not going to happen. That's what makes the, the woman open up that much, the oxytocin injection, that's like beyond any normal levels. But oxytocin, it, it's called a love hormone, and this, all the stress hormones cannot be on at the same time. It's like the switch is either on or off. Either oxytocin or cortisols and all those stress-related uh, bl blood chemistry. So the thing is, if there is a trace of stress hormone in the bloodstream, the cervix locks. And then it would take a lot of effort to open it. It's basically, again, the nature's way of assuring the survival of the species. Imagine you're a deer in the, in the woods, and uh, you're giving birth, and all of a sudden you hear a predator, or smell the predator. So you can't really, you know, push the baby back inside and run. The body just, the cervix locks, so the deer can run for her life and not drop the baby. So that mechanism of locking tight 
is very, very profound and powerful and, and uh, helpful. But imagine if a woman is rushed into the hospital and all of a sudden she's in this environment where her body is viewed as a machine, a mechanism that you can cut and paste and copy and blah, blah, blah. And nobody's treating her, you know, as a miracle in the making as, as she is. She goes into this, and it doesn't even, even if she thinks that the hospital is a safer place, all the vibes, all the smells, all the, you know, the hospital is not a relaxing place. It's just not. It's hard to relax in the hospital. The other thing is that the birthing field is very shy. It's very, very powerful when it's being cultivated in and uh, built with, you know, intelligence. But when it's not, it's very shy. So anybody who walks into the room with their own anxiety and unresolved trauma and their own terrifying feelings about birth, which most people have, because most people were born with suffering, most people are terrified of birth. So even if they're wishful thinkers, and if it's the best girlfriend or the mother or a husband, if they're bringing in their anxiety, it's going to affect the birthing field. Most doctors are terrified of birthing field. That's why they actually go into this field in the first place in, in their own deep unconscious search for healing, but then they go and they get sort of paid over with all the things to do, you know, to, to, this is what you do to cope with your deep primal terror of birth. Because most of them were not born well, they were circumcised, they were, um, and they were not even introduced to a concept that there was something that they need healing for. So there comes the doctor into this very, very, very palpable birthing field that, that um, requires a lot of humbleness and surrender and openness and just Oh, there is a lot that <laughs> that birthing field calls for. And there comes in that very busy man, and uh, he has a golf game to go to, or dinner, or 